What is up, YouTube? This is Red Leprechaun Gaming, and welcome back to He Who Fights With Monsters, book four by Shirtaloon. Chapter 15. A good friend and a very bad enemy. A sleep-deprived Annabeth Tilden was shotgunning coffee. More, she demanded hoarsely as she finished, sending her assistant to replenish her supply. One of the downsides of being an essence user was inability to resist the effects of caffeine, leading many coffee drinkers to ramp up their intake. This was bad enough at Category 1, but if she ascended to Category 2, coffee would no longer have any power to perk her up. As it was, she was adding stamina potion to each cup like shots of whiskey. Anna was not in her office, but in a conference room several floors down. She was snatching a couple of minutes rest before her next meeting, annoyed that the magic in her system purged the caffeine as fast as she could imbibe it. She was slumped forward, elbows on the desk as she rubbed her temples, which did nothing to alleviate the stress headache. The door opened to admit the Cabal representative, Vermilion. She had actually come to sympathize with the man over the course of the day, despite his organization being the source of her current tribulations. Not only had he been caught up in it directly, but like her, had been the highest ranking member of his organization, or had the highest ranking members of his organization dropping dissatisfaction onto him from a great height. Also like her, it was his job to somehow sort through the whole mess. The footage had become an international news story. A violent rolling gun battle on the streets of Sydney, a mysterious cloaked figure leaping from motorcycle to motorcycle amidst a hail of bullets, taking on a notorious biker gang by the dozen before vanishing without a trace. There were countless bizarre details, all of which were being overanalyzed by media organizations all around the world at that very moment. Why did the rider seem impervious to bullets? Was his strange outfit some kind of new advanced body armor? What was the large intimidating motorcycle he was riding? It was powerful, agile, and didn't conform to any make or model of bike that anyone could find. It had to be either heavily modified or entirely custom. The only thing that barely salvaged the debacle was that while there were a lot of phone camera recordings coming out on top of the news helicopter footage, barely a few seconds of clear footage was captured. Be it the news camera or the phone cameras of the people involved, none were able to focus correctly on the enigmatic rider. As he dealt with the bikers one by one, aside from a few scattered moments, every record had strange unfocused distortion. This made the few clear images get all the more attention. The strange spectacle of a biker seemingly to spontaneously combust, burning up from the inside atop his bike, had been posted online and picked up by the news. Another short scrap of phone footage was causing particular problems. By the time the news helicopter started recording, the rider's cloak was black, trailing out behind him. Someone in one of the cars, though, had captured several seconds of the cloak while it was lit up with shifting stars before their recording life likewise became distorted. It was the only clear image of the rider, their unusual outfit, and their unique bike. Most importantly... It was the only clear image of the rider trailing a comet of stars behind him. The, ine the inevitable comparisons to Batman Anna could live with, since it muddied the waters. After the footage of the Cloak of Stars appeared online, though, the figure was dubbed the Starlight Rider by the media. Immediate comparisons were drawn to the stories of an angel made of stars from just a few days earlier. The incident became known as... Si Known as the Sydney Children's Hospital Miracle. With the connection made between the SCH Miracle and the rolling gunfight, Anna's job was made all the harder. Vermilion not only had to work with her to keep a lid on things, but also bear the responsibility of the Blood Riders, instigating the latest and most public debacle. As much as she hated her situation, she was glad not to be in his shoes. This whole affair could, and probably would, get her demoted. She'd heard stories about the ways the Cabal showed their displeasure. They were only rumors. She still did not envy Vermilion, whatever the truth may be. Her sympathy for the man did not mean she'd let up on getting what she needed from the Cabal, however. Well, she demanded of him. For his part, Vermilion 
was having as bad an afternoon as Anna. A figure from the murky reaches of the Cabal's upper levels had arrived to take charge, reducing Vermilion himself to a glorified message boy. It left him off the hook for cleaning up the huge mess, but also without a means to redeem himself after what happened under his watch. He would be held on account for the network being handed the very last thing the Cabal wanted them to have, a justification to interfere with Cabal affairs. A delegation of my people has agreed to come answer for the Blood Riders, Vermillion said. When our own investigation is ongoing, you will have the answers when we have answers to give. And how long will this investigation take? We are confident we know exactly who did this, Vermillion said. They've already been taken in hand, and we are confirming the details now. That quickly... This was not some grand scheme. It was the ambition of a fool who did not realize what they were setting in motion. And how do I know you're not just drumming up a scapegoat? As you know, Vermilion said, we do not like outside influences in our affairs. You have always been fastidious about handling your own internal affairs privately, Anna acknowledged. In this instance, however... We recognize that our internal affairs have become significantly impacted, or have significantly impacted the network's core tenants. I've been told we'll be handling, we'll be handing the perpetrator completely over to you. Perpetrator singular? You expect us to believe one person did all this? The person in question did try to rope in an ally, Vermillion said. As best we can determine, this prospective ally immediately saw how stupid and wrong the affair would go and tried to stop it. He was killed for trying to interfere. You don't have to take our word for it, though. You can use whatever means are at your disposal to get the truth from the man in question. Any means... You're truly giving him up instead of just a supervised interrogation. Normally, we protect our own, Vermilion said. But this man has violated our own fundamental rules. No one's happy about how these events have gone. You'll not be expected to show this person the same courtesy you would otherwise extend to our members. How do you question, how you question him? And what you do with him when you're done is entirely up to you. And if we choose to give him back to you, that would be one of the crueler choices, Vermillion said. The decision had been made to cut the cancer out and leave it to the network, in hope of avoiding more painful procedures down the line. The man in question was never a cabal elite. He was a relative made into a vampire out of compassion. Without being turned, he would have died from a fatal medic from a fatal medical condition, long since cured. Anna was satisfied with the Cabal's gesture, at least until she actually got her hands on the man in question to learn more. She turned the conversation to another topic. Why did you just keep these blood servants around? She asked. You had to understand that depriving them of blood would make them dangerous and volatile. I'm surprised your people didn't kill them. It was disgust, Vermillion said. In the end, it was the Cabal members who approached the gang with promises and offers. Even if the members in question were far outside what would have been permitted, the Cabal was nonetheless responsible. Killing these men for becoming the thing we made them is ethically unsound. You're going to talk about mercy, Anna asked. Even disregarding the dead bikers, we have six civilian fatalities, and we aren't even done counting the injured. This disaster has been broadcast to every corner of the world, on my watch. Everyone from the steering committee on the network council to the goddamn prime minister has crawled up my ass and formed an orderly queue at the punch Anna in the colon booth. That's what your mercy has done. Some violent lashing out would not fall outside the expectations of any known criminal motorcycle gang, Vermillion explained. If not instigated to this, they would have remained contained. 
I was already in the process of arranging to have them arrested so they could go through withdrawal in custody, where they could be locked up without hurting anyone. Well, that didn't really work out, did it? No, Vermilion conceded. Unfortunately, I was overruled on who would administer the winding down of the Blood Rider project. The one who started all this was the same one placed in charge of closing out the Blood Rider affair. It was meant to save face and be a teaching moment. That seems like a recipe for disaster, Anna said. And now that recipe has followed to the letter. Quite, Vermilion agreed. What of this rogue essence magician? He's not opposed to meeting with you, Vermilion said. I had already advised him to seek you out prior to this affair. Out of the kindness of your heart, I suppose. A weapon you are not equipped to wield is at least as much of a danger to you as your enemy, Vermilion said. I don't know where this man came from, but he's a naked edge, fresh from battle. A well-sharpened edge at that. He went through the bikers like a chainsaw through pudding. Thirty blood servants, and I don't even think he saw them as a threat. It's almost like he was testing out different ways to kill them, to see which ones worked. As it turns out, all of them did. So he's a maniac. I told you, Miss Tilden, he's fresh from some kind of battlefield. His instincts are still to react to any threat with definitive force. You think being bloodthirsty gives him a pass? I think if we can help rehabilitate him, he'll be a valuable ally, Vermilion said. If we forcibly suppress him, on the other hand, we'll make a profoundly dangerous enemy. I suggest trying to understand him before taking action. Well, if it's understanding I need, Anna said, I know where to start. In the police station, Vermilion and Anna watched Hero from the next room, through the, inter through the interrogation room security camera. Hero's body language revealed none of the turmoil they could read in his aura. From the moment he arrived in the police station, Hero had played confused victim flawlessly. Once he found himself in an interrogation room, he'd asked for a lawyer and not said another word. Hiro Asano has not been inducted into the secrets of our world, Vermilion said. By your own rules, that makes him hands off. I'll acknowledge that if his nephew kept him in the dark, like you said, it's a good sign the boy can act with decorum, Anna conceded. Will he continue to do so after today, though? He's certainly going to tell his uncle now. Of course he will, Vermilion said. But Hiro hasn't been told yet. Is today the day to play fast and loose with your rules? There is such a thing as discretionary power, Mr. Vermilion. Miss Tilden, you, like everyone else, saw this man's nephew take apart a magically empowered gang of hardened bikers like they were a nice crumbly cheddar. What you didn't see was how he reacted when the situation began. He wasn't scared when they came upon us. He wasn't worried or even concerned. He was annoyed, maybe even a little excited. He killed over a dozen people, easily and without hesitation. I'd be very careful with how you treat his uncle. You need to bring him into us, Anna said. I told you that I've already agreed to set up a meeting. We can discuss the terms of that meeting now if you'd like terms. He can't go around using magic to kill people on television. He comes to us or we go get him. Despite the nature of his power, Mrs. Tilden, he isn't one of your people. Somehow he gained the power that only your people wield without learning of your organization before I told him about it yesterday. You think I care? You think the people that I answer to care? Romillion turned his head from the viewing window to look at Anna, his face softening. Mrs. Tilden, Anna, we've known each other for a few years, and I have, I think, a good working relationship. As such, I hope you take this advice in the spirit it was given. Do not provoke Jason Asano. I've seen only a little of his power and a little of his mind, but it's been my experience 
that he treats kind with kind. Show him courtesy, and you'll receive it in turn. Come at him with force, and you might end up smeared across the highway on the news. The network isn't some gang hopped up on vampire blood, Craig. If we decide to deal with him, there's nothing he can do to stop us. Even if he's inclined to stand against us, he won't try once he realizes the magnitude of what he's up against. Perhaps, Vermilion said, but I don't think so. He may have the blood of the Japanese, but he has the spirit of Ned Kelly. Didn't Ned Kelly make a stand against the authorities, getting friends, family, and innocent bystanders killed in the process? And he became a folk hero, none of which invalidates my point. In case it sways your decision, it's the official position of the Cabal that Jason Asano's liberty and independence be respected. How'd you get your people to agree to that? I convinced them that a favor today will pay dividends tomorrow. I strongly recommend that you take the same attitude. If the Cabal thinks they can use him to establish their own branch of essence magicians, they're in for disappointment. That kind of ambition's above my pay grade, Miss Tilden, but if that's their intention, I'm confident you're correct. I'm simply of the opinion that Jason Asano will make a good friend today, and a very bad enemy tomorrow. Anna gave a weary sigh. Do you know where he is right now? And that's the end of chapter 15. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, have fun, guys.